Women's Atlantic Challenge Cup Soccer. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Light Beer. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by TWA, we fly the wide bodies you like most. 747s and L 1011s. From Giant Stadium, Jim Carvalos together with Seamus Mallon tonight. The opening of the Transatlantic Cup, the Cosmos, the Vancouver Whitecaps from the NASL, Roma of Italy, Manchester City of England. We'll be back with Dennis Tour to talk about tonight's game after this message. When you come to America, drink light beer, but don't drink the water. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Friday Giants Stadium, the opening of the first Transatlantic Cup. Tonight, the Cosmos taking out Manchester City in the first game. You'll see the second game on the USA Network, Vancouver and Roma, right after tonight's game. Dennis Stewart, playing for Manchester City, played with the Cosmos the last two years. He's happy to be back at Giants Stadium. This is Seamus Mallon, talking with Dennis Stewart of Manchester City on an evening more like Manchester, Dennis, but uh, it's good to see you back in Giants Stadium. You must have some mixed feelings about this visit. Yeah, it's a very difficult game for me emotionally, my, uh, Seamus. You know, we've met so many nice people here, and with both in in the club and in this in the stadium, and uh, it's very, very, it's a strain emotionally. Well, I'm sure it is, and I know you got a nice hand as you came out here. But let's talk about your club, your new club, and your old club, Manchester City. Uh, big experiment this year, lots of young players, mildly successful, I suppose, towards the end of the year. How do you look back on the season? Well, very successful because it was a we, Malcolm, the coach. He, uh, he had to change an awful lot of plays. He's, I think we sold about 10 players in the season. He decided that the players weren't what we wanted. So obviously there's going to be a transitional period, and we brought a lot of young players and very promising young players, and hopefully the future uh, is going to hold more for us. So you think there is a good future for Manchester City, and for you there too also? Yes, I think it's, we've got a nice balance. You know, we've got a lot of young players, and uh, from my point of view, I'm still enjoying it very much indeed. Well, good. I'm sure the fans are going to enjoy this game and the rest of the games in the next couple of days. Dennis, thank you very much for joining us. Go, Jimmy. All right, at Giant Stadium, the Cosmos taking out Man. Go. All right, moments away from the opening kickoff. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon. Cosmos in the white uniforms, Manchester City in the blue, and we're underway. We'll give you the lineups as we go along. The number six for the Cosmos, Beckenbauer to Bogicevic. Now to Bruce Wilson, the fullback coming up the left wing. And the fans already chanting Cosmos. Bogey leaves it to Canalia, goes back to Beckenbauer. Now on the right side for Ricky Davis. Welcoming all our cable systems in 48 states on the USA Sports Network. You're really in for a treat. Outstanding soccer, outdoor soccer. All right, here's Dennis Tour, number 10, the ex-Cosmos player. That's Angelo DiBernardo on him. Romero, the fine 19-year-old Paraguayan striker of the Cosmos, not playing tonight, has some knee problems. But Vanderell Sheamus is in for the Cosmos for the first time ever. He was just signed. And playing his first game of the Cosmos. And ridden off the ball is Francois Vanderels, number 20. It's a foul, and the Cosmos will have a free kick. Seamus, quickly, let's go to Manchester City's lineup. Okay, they're going to start with John Platt in goal. The back four is Dave Bennett, Paul Power, Paul Futcher, and Tommy Booth. Middle of the field is going to be Nicky Reed 
uh, Tony Henry and Steve Daly. And up front, Dania, the famous Polish player, Dennis Tuart, well known, of course, around the league, and Roger Palmer. All right, Cosmo's going with the ball. That's Bogey to the left wing. Bogey. Now tackled away nicely, and Manchester City with the ball. That's Dave Bennett, the number 14. Plays it too far up the right side, intended for Dennis Tuart. And again, Manchester City not used to playing on AstroTurf, and they'll have to get used to the slippery surface and uh, and the ball will roll a little further than uh, they might otherwise anticipate although Seamus they did play against Memphis in an exhibition game on AstroTurf so at least they're one game up on it that game interesting enough Jim going to a shootout which Manchester City eventually won and you know the only guy in Manchester City that had any familiarity with that was Dennis Stewart here's a shot over the top so Manchester City has the first shot of the game, and it's taken by Dania. No, excuse me, that was not Dania. Yeah, it was Dennis Stewart. That was Dennis Stewart. Right. Dennis Stewart. Speaking of Dania, we've talked a lot about Stewart, and I guess we should. But uh, what about Casimir's Dania? He's a great international player. Well, Dania, of course, came into his own as captain of the Polish team in the World Cup '74, which. Uh, shocked everybody by eliminating England in the preliminary rounds and then went on to do extremely well um, finishing up in third place in Germany in 1974. I Manchester City in the blue uniforms with the ball. This is Futcher. Paul Futcher and the brother of uh, Ron Futcher who plays for the Minnesota Kicks. The number five there is Tommy Booth the defender. As we try to familiarize you with the Manchester City players early on. Here's a good ball. Paul Power, number six, a defender moving forward. Now, Wilson just fouled Dennis Stewart as he knocked the ball away from him, so it'll be a free kick. Coming up now for Manchester City in Cosmo zone. No 35-yard line in this game. All right, Daniel. Now they played in the box with a great save. Oh, what a nice save by Birkenmeyer on the shot taken by Steve Daly. So Birkenmeyer comes up with the best save of the game early on. And Manchester City controlling the game, Seamus, early on. All right, knocked away by Naskins, made the defensive play. Now to Davis. Seamus, here comes a replay. Bogey, that shot on that. Durgan to Franz. Here's the replay. Franz. Now here's the shot. Look at how Daly curls that ball around Carlos Alberto. And Carlos Alberto wisely does not screen Birkenmeyer, oh, seeing that he couldn't get to the shot. Let it go by, knowing Birkenmeyer will be at the post. Cosmos have it in play now. Futcher still at from Kinalia. And now the ball knocked up here to Wilson. And out of Carlos Alberto. The Cosmos of Manchester City. No score in the match. We've played four minutes and 15 seconds of the first half. Transatlantic Cup. Four teams involved. Roma of Italy. Manchester City here of England. The Cosmos and Vancouver. And we'll have a, a second game tonight. You can see the other two clubs in the tournament right after this game on most of these stations on the USA Network. And that will be Roma at Vancouver. So a great doubleheader lined up for you this evening. Now here's Beckenbauer. Through the legs of a defender to Bogey. Taps it to Ricky Davis. Davis now to Johan Naskins. Naskins now holds the ball. Davis overlapping on the right wing and the pass too far by Johan Naskins. From Giant Stadium, the Cosmos and Manchester City, there's no score, 39-52 to play in the match. We'll be back after these messages. All right, still no score in the match. The Cosmos and Manchester City, 38-39 to play in the first half. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon. And Seamus, uh, early on, looks like the clubs are feeling each other out a little bit. Yes, and of course, Manchester City, uh, very familiar with uh, the absence of a 35 yard line and moving very cohesively as a unit. You've got to remember this is the end of their season. They're absolutely as cohesive as they're ever going to be. And so they are going to look like uh, a more familiar unit than the Cosmos might early in their season. And right, now for the first time tonight, Seamus, the Cosmos pressing a little bit as they have in their last few games with their front line really putting pressure on, on defenders and they knocked it away but early on it didn't look as if the Cosmos were playing with the intensity that we've seen them play with in the last couple of matches well, they now got, they're chasing again yeah and they've got to essentially prevent uh, 
Daly, number eight, and Dania, number nine, in the middle of the field from having a free hand. And, of course, one of the ways of doing that is to prevent them from getting the ball, closing down the passing lanes. And that's why, uh, so much, that's why the pressure is beginning to be felt uh, in the defensive third. All right, tough ball to handle off the goal kick, and it was knocked over the near sideline by Paul Powers. So it'll be a Cosmos throw. That's young Rick Davis throwing it in. And the referee says you, you cheated yourself a little bit. You ought to be throwing it in from way up here. Now, that's unusual. Usually you get it the other way where the guy tries to cheat up a little bit. All right, here's Beckenbauer. Check it, Alberto, getting over to Bruce Wilson now. And look at City now. They're trying to close it down a little bit, not giving the Cosmos any room. And I'm sure Dennis Stewart told them all about the Cosmos and how they had to play him. Birkenmeyer. Marvelous skill by Dania. Stewart, one time pass. Back to Dennis Stewart. Beautiful give and go. Here's Stewart outside the box, playing it in the box, but cleared nicely by Wilson to Bogey. And Bogey, a beautiful ball. Coming out here, the goalkeeper had to come out and save it. Comes all the way back into the other goal area. Goalkeeper, very wisely, Johnny Plack came out to get it because Vanderels was closing in. Well, there's where a goalkeeper has to be almost an additional sweeper, and we see a lot more of that now in the modern game, Jim, where the keeper, especially when there's no 35-yard line, has got to come way out and break up plays like that. All right, broken up by Manchester City now. City gets it over the midfield line to Dania. Broken up. De Bernardo initially broke that up. And the Cosmos control their own zone. No score in the match. 35. 57 to play in the first half. Naskin setter. Ricky Davis, number 17. Here comes Carlos Alberto. Now to Bogey. Shy of midfield. Bogey. Trying to get around the defender and a foul call on the defender, Tony Henry. And the Cosmos put it in play. This is Bogey. Vanderels. Francois Vanderels. Now to Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer sees Bruce Wilson free on the left. Here comes Wilson taking on the fullback in the box. Here's the cross, and it's knocked over the goal line. The Cosmos get a corner kick. So Wilson taking on Nicky Reed and got a corner kick out of it. And now Bogey will come over to take the corner kick. Cosmos' first corner of the night. And as you might expect, people good in the air are in the box. Kinalia, Naskins, Durgan. Here it comes to the far post. Naskins trying to get ahead on it. I believe Manchester City got ahead on it first. And now trying to come out. And they save it nicely. Now for those of you watching soccer for the first time, the ball has to go completely over the line to be out of bounds, or for that matter, be a goal. Cosmos intercept. Di Bernardo coming back to collect that ball. And now here's Bogey on the left wing. Beautiful ball to Di Bernardo. And knocked over the sideline. It'll be Cosmo's ball, I believe. It could very well be a foul. Could very well be a foul on Dave Bennett. Yes, it is a foul on Dave Bennett. You know, or, or Roger Palmer, number 18 Palmer. Yes, correction, it is Roger Palmer. Again, you tend to have these fast breaks from midfield when you don't have this 35-yard line because the defensive players will pull up, not worrying about players behind them. All right, here's the ball intended for Vanderels and a good defensive play to knock it away from him. Now comes back in the box, and they shot, and it just went over the top of the roof. Would have been an offside anyway. From Giant Stadium, still no score in the match. The Cosmos nothing. Manchester City nothing. We'll be back in a moment. No score in the match. 32 minutes and 19 seconds to play in the first half. Now watch this action now. As the Cosmos had a chance here by Vanderels, but he was ruled offside anyway. That was the play just before we went away to commercial. Now we're back to the live action. The Cosmos roll it back to their fine goalkeeper, Hubert Birkenmeyer. Cosmos have been playing very well of late. They've won four straight league matches. Manchester City had a tough time early and for most of the uh, English first division season, but boy, shame to say, really came out at the end. 
Well, they're a young team. Uh, as we all know, they've made some big experiments, bring some young players in. We'll talk about them as the game goes on. But with youth, it tends to obviously get better as the season progresses, and that's what they found. All right, the veteran tour now, the ex Cosmos player, not to worry for the Cosmos. Mason plays the bogey now. Bogey, a long ball, beautifully to Kingali on the right side as the Cosmos come attacking in the right wing. Here's Giorgio. There's this long cross. It's picked off by Fletcher. He was intending it for Di Bernardo on the left side, trying to turn the defense around a little bit. And now a good ball released here to Dave Bennett, who's a defender. And now to Dania, the veteran. Great player from Poland. Knocked away by Alberto, the great player from Brazil, the Beckenbauer. A nice little one touch to Di Bernardo and back to Wilson. Wilson. Now to Bogey. Bogey's been brilliant the last four or five games for the Cosmos. A high ball to Ricky Davis. Ricky brings it under control well on the right side. Takes his man out. Ricky goes to the right side but played very well. And now the ball knocked out of bounds and over the goal line. And it was last touched by Ricky Davis. Good defensive play there by the number six player. That was Paul Power. He did a good job. He anticipated Ricky would break to his right. Cut to his right. He did and he had great position on him. Well, Paul Power, of course, is used to playing players like this. You do see that kind of play a great deal in the English League. That is a wing player, a wing fullback, trying to make pace down the right side and then take advantage of a one-on-one -on -one situation. So they're used to this, and uh, Power dealt with it very easily, really. And the fans boo as the ball is rolled back to the goalkeeper. We, we must add that it's been raining the, the entire day here in the New Jersey area. It's held down the crowd, but still, Seamus, under the circumstances, it's a wonderful crowd considering the weather and the ball knocked over the sideline by Paul Power the Cosmos will have a throw and they have to play it quickly and there's a good move by Vanderels Vanderels streaking boy oh that was almost a brilliant ball I don't think bogey expected it to come and he, and he almost stopped just before he got to it had he stayed in stride Seamus it would have been right on the money that's right bogey where he is used to of course reaching for a long his long legs out for those passes, and that one was played almost too good to be true. It was right on his toe, and he didn't quite go far enough for it. Well, to take to two Man Manchester City players as he went up, um, who thought he was going to pass it inside on two different occasions. Well, he showed you some of his skill. Bennett applying pressure now on the offensive end. The Cosmos are forced to kick it over the far sideline. Jeff Durgan. And it'll be a Manchester City throw in 29 minutes and five seconds to play in the first half. We have no score. And after tonight's first game of the doubleheader, you'll be watching the second game, which will be Vancouver hosting Roma of Italy. That should be something as well. It's going to be a great tournament. We'll tell you more about it. Our next games will be on Saturday afternoon with the Cosmos hosting Roma here. Manchester venturing out to Vancouver. We'll have both those games for you. And then a big doubleheader around Monday, Memorial Day, starting in the afternoon. So you've got great soccer to watch on USA. And the ball, the attempted header was not, was not very good by Tommy Booth. I have a feeling that Naskins was, <laughs> yes. was applying some pressure because yeah. Booth never did get off the ground very well, did he? And now the steal uh, by Roger Palmer, no foul call. The Cosmos expecting a foul. Now playing it off to Denny Tuart, broken up by Di Bernardo, who came over to pick up Tuart. One thing is for sure, I don't think Denny's ever seen his Cosmos team play so aggressively on the defense. And now uh, here comes Vanderels. Boy, he's something, isn't he? And he's knocked off the ball, and the referee calls a foul. Already early in this match, in the first 18 minutes or so, Vanderels has treated the fans with some of his international skill. Well, he's not afraid to dribble into a crowd or around the outside of a crowd, and there he takes on the center of the defense very nicely and is, uh, draws the foul by power right, on the, uh, right at the top of the penalty area. Here's the free kick. He now you booms it, and a save. That was on the way to goal. That was a great save by Johnny Plattis. He now you took the feed. It's a corner kick coming up now. Corner kick coming up. He now you really blasted it. And Platt at the last moment got a hand on it to make a great save, Seamus. I think he either saw it late or it was deflected off a defender. The corner too far. But Naskins heads it back into the box and now volleyed out. Alberto allows it to roll over the far sideline. From Giant Stadium, it's a nothing-nothing match. The Cosmos and Manchester City will be back after these messages. Yeah. Welcome to our people, please. And Hi. That the house. In people pleaser. 
Still no score in the match at Giants Stadium in the Transatlantic Cup opener, the Cosmos against Manchester City of England. 25-41 to play in the first half, and the Cosmos and White come on the attack. Davis nicely to Vanderels outside of the box. Back to Ricky Davis. And knocked away and over the near sideline by City. That was knocked out by Steve Daly. The Cosmos will have a throw, and there's Steve Daly. Steve Daly, what a big addition he has been uh, to Manchester City, coming over from Wolverhampton Wanderers for uh, something like one and a half million pounds, a tremendous amount of money for anybody to spend on one player in England, uh, but that's the kind of money they're throwing around in England these days, and I think he's going to pan out to be a very good addition for them over the years ahead. All right, here's Beckenbauer. Long, high, perfect, right on the money. Hit the bullseye to Wilson. Wilson to DiBernardo. Plays it back to Bruce nicely. Cosmos attacking. There's a high ball in the box. It's knocked loose. Beckenbauer shot the foot over the top. Beckenbauer hit a cannon, and it went over the top. Well, there again, you see the value of Vanderels because that ball was played to him in the crowd. He rose way up in the air and nodded that ball down back uh, for Franz Beckenbauer to take a shot. Uh, and that's a, an, another kind of a, added dimension to the Cosmos attack that you don't see a lot. Uh, Giorgio does not, uh, Canalia does not get a lot of ball play to his, uh, his head as a target man, but obviously with Van Der Elst, they can do that. Johnny Platt, Beckenbauer off the side of his head. Let's see if Wilson can save it. He can't. And gets it back to Bogey. Bogey got it back to Wilson. Pressure by City. And as a result of the pressure, Wilson knocked it over the sideline. It'll be a Manchester City throw in. 24 07 to play in the first half. There's no score in the match. Right City, deep in Cosmo zone in that right wing. Looking for a way in. Here's Denny Tewart. Off to Futcher, the defender coming up on the attack. Kinalia trying to ride him off the ball. They get it back to Futcher. Not a Dania. 23-39 to play in the half. Still looking for the game's first goal. There's Denny Tewart. Alberto. Watch it. And slipping and falling is Steve Daly as he tried to wind up and hit it from about 21 yards. And again, because of the because of the rain, the field a little slippery, and you saw his back foot just slide out. Well, Jim, the player from Manchester City who's looked extremely sharp up front is this number 14, Dave Bennett, who actually listed on the program as a right fullback. Clearly he's not. He's a striker, a twin That's striker right. with Dennis Stewart. Roger Palmer, number 18, has gone back to play in the back four instead. But uh, I think uh, this number 14, Bennett, is going to give um, uh, Durgan, the central defender, I think the toughest game he's had all year. Durgan, for those of you uh, watching him for the first time around the country, is only 18 years old. And for those watching in the Pacific Northwest, played at uh, Seattle's uh, in high school last year. And it's just incredible what this young man has done, pressed into action because the Cosmos stoppers uh, have been injured. And he's done a marvelous job. Played at Stadium High School in Seattle. And what a job and a great inspiration to all the young Americans in the country to know that there's a spot in this league if they're good enough. And Durgan has been good enough. And the Cosmos with Naismith intercepting to Vanderels. Watch Francois Vanderels. Tackle away, a good tackle over the near sideline. It'll be a Cosmos throw. Keep in mind, Vanderels playing his first game with the Cosmos. And the man in the middle is Weisweiler. And it's Weisweiler, the Cosmos coach. Flanked by Miguel de Lima and Terry Garbett, his assistants. Now nah, here's Beckenbauer to bogey, a little give and go tap, and it was not a great idea, though. Oh, great yes. Great idea. And unfortunately, the referee obstructed Beckenbauer as he went through on the give and go to ret return that lovely back pass uh, from Bogicevic. Mike Cosmos will have to hurry back in the defense because here comes City on the outside of the box. And what a tackle by Naiskins, and they call a foul on Johan Naiskins. Naiskins yeah. called for the foul as he came in hard. He came in with a. Uh, a two-footed tackle, I think, is what uh, they're complaining about. He comes in with uh, two feet flying, and they'll, they'll call that one up pretty quickly in Europe or, or uh, in this country, too. All right, the wall set up, and this kick will come from about 25 yards. There's a good shot of it from behind the net. This is what Cuban Birkenbauer is seeing. Daly is number eight. He's got a great shot. Let's watch... 
takes it and it's along the ground and Burke and Meyer had it covered all the way from Giant Stadium a nothing nothing soccer game the Cosmos of Manchester City and we'll be back with more action after this message five to play in the half the Cosmos in white Manchester City of England in blue and 1919 to play in the half Okay, let's take a little look at that free kick. You'll see the Naskins break from the wall. The ball goes where he used to be, but exactly in the right place is Birkenmeyer, and he uh, picks it up very easily. All right, back to the live action now, and City throwing it out of their own box. Remember game two tonight, right after this one, Vancouver, the defending NASL champions, hosting Roma of Italy. Transatlantic Cup, the very first ever. Wonderful idea by the NASL. Going to be talking to the commissioner Phil Woosnam about it at halftime. There's a good tackle by Naskins again, and Dania's shot is knocked down and handled by Birkenmeyer. Birkenmeyer has been a great goalkeeper the last four or five games for the Cosmos. A Beckenbauer pass to Ricky Davis to the midfield line. He has Vander Els breaking on the right side now. Loses the ball. And here's a good ball to Denny Tour to the left. Alberto, his teammate, coming, former teammate, coming to Markham. Tour. And Alberto <laughs> knocks his cross over the goal line. How many times have we seen that scene in practice in previous years, Jim? Alberto uh, and Tour taunting each other a little bit. A great deal of respect for each other, these two players. But uh, Alberto winning that particular round. Casimir Dania will take the corner kick from Manchester City with 17.50 to play. And headed out. That was Naskins again. And Naskins blocked the shot, too. How about that? Headed it out, then came out and took the shot off his back. And that is vintage Johan Naskins. Well, that's why he gets the biggest cheer of anybody when the Cosmos come out uh, their introductions before the game. He really is a fans player. He just gives 110% all over the field. City, a long throw in the box. It comes free, and Tuart crosses it, and it's saved off the line. But there was an offside call before that. Offside call before that. Well, there's the nice flick on by Booth. The ball is played wide. Now, it may go over the line here. Let's see if they catch it before it goes over the line. Yes, I think it's over yeah. the line when uh, Dewart clipped it back, and uh, Bennett was there to touch it in. And a great look at Ricky Davis covering up behind his goalkeeper just in case. All right, back to the live action. Here comes Naskins playing on the left in the Cosmos come attacking. A long high ball coming for Bogey. Bogey touches to Giorgio. Giorgio tried to get the shot away. It was punched out nicely by the goalkeeper. And now Naskins hit the ball off the face of Daly. Actually, it looked as if Naskins might have kicked him in the face, but he did not. He actually kicked the ball off his face. That's right. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, it comes out to Daly. Now, you see the kick coming in. It's not a high kick, but absolutely the ball comes right up under his chin or catches him right in the nose, I suspect, uh, and he's okay. And the referee caught it because he gave the Cosmos a throw in. Bogey now trying to flick it on to Giorgio and the goalkeeper Johnny Platt and Johnny Platt doesn't wait very long to come off the line as soon as he sees something dangerous happening he's off the line quickly of course there's a danger in that as well sometimes you can get caught out of position all right City with the ball on the right side it's been a good soccer game I think Henry plays it inside a good tackle by Ricky Davis that time and here come the Cosmos with bogey bogey a long ball coming for Vanderels and now to Kinalia outside the box Giorgio now waiting. Alberto's behind him if he wants him. He tried to get it to Bogey and it was deflected. And now City will come the other way. Remember, City's got a lot of young legs, got a lot of good young players on this team, and they're rounded out with veterans like Tuart and Dania. And it's, it looks like it's going to be a tough game, Seamus. Well, nobody gave an inch on that fast breakdown there. Uh, I think it was Vander Elst had a real tough one on one confrontation and was lucky to get the ball to Giorgio Canale at all in the first place. So I think there's no quarter is going to be asked for or given in the defensive third of the field. I Beckenbauer, Crossfield playing it for Bruce Wilson. There was a time in this league 
when any time an NASL club played any foreign team, first, second, third division, whatever, that there was an element of fear that maybe we weren't good enough, uh, the NASL to play anyway. Well, that's not happened anymore because of the great upgrade of talent in this league, number one, and because I think of the recent successes, especially by the Cosmos against top foreign competition, like Cologne of Germany, who they beat on this stadium about a month ago, three to one. And the Cosmos play international tours around the world, so they have a lot of respect for these clubs. Here's a shot by Kinayago! Oh, my word. That is vintage Canalia. How many times do we find ourselves saying that? My word. Let's see it again, Seamus. There's the ball from Wilson. A nicely flighted ball that comes right to Giorgio Canalia's chest. He has a man coming on him, but too late. Look at that, right up in the upper corner. My word, right out of the... What out of a teenager's comic book, uh, really. That's where you're supposed to put him in uh, fiction. Great goal by Giorgio Quinalia. In that Cologne game, he scored twice. He has scored here against Manchester City of England. During the regular season, he has scored nine times. Off to a great start, Quinalia. Now the Cosmos on top, 1-0, 13-15 to play in the first half. We'll be back with more Transatlantic Challenge Cup. All right, one nothing the Cosmos. 12 minutes to play in the first half. A sensational Kinalia goal from Franz Beckenbauer and Bruce Wilson getting assists. And the time of the goal, 30-55 of the first half, Seamus. It was incredible that Kinalia actually was allowed so much room. He's not allowed that kind of room in the NASL, frankly. And because that was, if you recall, a, a fairly long flighted ball from Wilson. It took a little while to get there, and you would think that English defenders in particular are used to taking care of that kind of a challenge. Uh, but they gave Giorgio just a split second too, too long. Kinalia, so much quicker this year with that weight loss, turning so much better. Not that he turned very badly before, but he's just that much quicker this year. And it's really paid off. Play it back to Alberto. And now to Bruce Wilson. The Cosmos have impressed the entire game by a typically close marking English first division team. Manchester City. Not a young Ricky Davis. Great story on Ricky in Sports Magazine. This month's issue. Now to Beckenbar. Franz trying to penetrate. Finds Naskins open on the right. Naskins crosses knocked down. He got it back again. Johan flights it to the near post and it's chested over the goal line by City and it'll be a Cosmos corner kick again. That was Tommy Booth. Roger Palmer uh, took the full force of that first cross uh, from Naskins in his chest, uh, but he seems okay now. Bogey with a corner in the middle of the goal. It's a good corner. Naskins header just off the mark. Naskins was there. Beckenbauer, what a trap. What a trap by Beckenbauer. And out of Alberto. Vanderelts. And Palmer tackled it away. Now a race for the ball. And Ricky Davis got a foot on it and knocked it away. And over the near sideline, away from the dangerous Dave Bennett. Intelligent play by Wilson there, who resisted the option to make a sliding tackle when he had some help from Davis. All right, City with the ball now, trailing 1-0 on the beautiful Kinalia goal with 9.53 to play in the half. Palmer, shot off the mark. 9.44 to play in the first half. The Cosmos leading 1-0. Roger Palmer with that shot, and uh, that's one of the problems, I think, uh, one of the areas of criticism of British soccer these days has been some of the finishing, particularly from uh, the players coming through from the back and even from the front runners. No unusual um, great scorers, uh, at least not in the numbers that there used to be uh, in the eyes of most British fans. Uh, However, the national team has really come on of late, right, Seamus? Notwithstanding a 4-1 loss to Wales where they didn't have all their people and taking nothing away from Wales, they looked great against Argentina recently. Now here's Wilson now. And Angelo Di Bernardo to Bogey. Bogey away from Dania. They played against each other internationally. Alberto from Quinalia. Nice save by Carlos. Beckenbauer distributes to Ricky Davis, the fullback ranging up the right side here. Long, high ball coming in the box. Fletcher heads it out. 
DiBernardo's running it down. Time remaining 8.41 in the first half. The Cosmos one to nothing. Angelo, a low, hard cross, dangerous cross. And played very well by Johnny Platt, the goalkeeper of City. From Giant Stadium with the Cosmos up one nothing over City. We'll be back after these messages. Don't miss Disco 9000, starring Johnny Taylor and John Poole, next Friday on the Black Entertainment Television Network. There's a mistake, and the Cosmos shot is blocked down by Futcher. Cosmos, Vanderell sent a ball that didn't look that dangerous as it was coming in the box, but Di Bernardo never stopped on it. The goalkeeper ranged out too far. That's right, and Di Bernardo with a great option here, unfortunately chooses the wrong one. See, Giorgio's right behind him, Canalia, and he just backheeled it to Canalia. It was an easy goal, but uh, in the heat of the action, it's not always easy to think of those things. All right, the corner kick by Davis in front, punched out, and the Cosmos looked dangerous again. That time it was Durgan. They've had men open in front of that goal on corner kicks. I said that the goalkeeper ranged out too far. That was not true. He did not range out too far. The defender did not play the ball back to him correctly. That's Actually right. hit it off to his side. Now Durgan with the intercept and sends Beckenbauer running nicely. Here's Franz as people cut crisscross. That's Di Bernardo and Kinaya crisscrossing as Bogey has it, surveys the situation. And now finds the open man, Johan Naiskins. Brilliant ball by Bogey. Naiskins to Franz, back to Johan on the right wing. Let's see if he can turn it. He can. A high cross. Di Bernardo keeps it alive. Bogey. And now here's his cross, and it's headed away nicely. And the Cosmos dangerous. That was a good header out of there, played by Paul Power. And the fans applaud as Di Bernardo knocks it away. Cosmos creating and doing some great stuff here, Seamus, in the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Well, Paul Power, that tall, rangy left back for City, has had to come into the middle to help out Butcher and Booth, who are really being stretched uh, there in the middle, and, and that's kind of a surprise to see. Would have thought central defenders would have no trouble for it from an English team. All right, here's Henry, number seven, plays it to Dania. Now to Futcher in the penalty box. Wilson rides him out of the box. Alberto over to help. Alberto knocked it away, and it'll be a corner kick. Alberto came over to help Bruce Wilson that time, but City gets a corner kick with 5.21 to play in the first half. Short corner now, comes to Futcher, here's the cross, and it's headed high in the air, still alive, as Birkenmeyer came out, but did not get the ball that time, and a foul called, a foul called against Booth. Booth, Tommy again. Booth. one nothing the Cosmos, Jim Carmelis and Seamus Mallon, the first Transatlantic Challenge Cup. You'll see Vancouver, Roma, the second game. Di Bernardo tackled away nicely by Fletcher. Well, you'll see a lot of tackles even on this field by the English club because the English kids are brought up tackling the ball, Seamus. Well, it looks like a great chance when you have three against four, but not against an English, not offside. against an English defender. Yeah, Excuse offside. me, Seamus. The offside. Denny Tour hadn't had the ball for about 10 or 15 minutes until that time down, and that time uh, Denny tried to get the ball through. Well, I still think the most dangerous threats for Manchester City are going to come from midfielders coming through, particularly Daly and Dania, uh, because Tourit is an intelligent and experienced enough player to be able to utilize those runs, and those are the players that have to be tracked down very carefully by the Cosmos midfielders. All right, they've got Naiskins offside. Johan Naiskins <laughs> offside in the play. Looked like Dr. J bombing the ball <laughs> right. as he's coming in. I thought he was going to come in and throw it in the goal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one nothing the Cosmos on top. 3.55 to play in the first half. At halftime, stay tuned because got a very good piece on this Manchester City club. Some great shots of their action and uh, music and some commentary. I think you're going to enjoy it. And then Phil Woosnam, the commissioner of the North American Soccer League, will also be interviewed. So stay tuned at halftime. And now it's going to be corner kick. Wilson was complaining that he was... Uh, but he was fouled, but referee not buying it. You know, we've had some dangerous situations on corners. We haven't had any goals yet, but there have been some chances, both sides. Now, here comes City. Here comes the cross. Headed away by Jeff Durgan. And Bogey to Wilson. A little dangerous. He got it back. Di Bernardo got it to Bogey. Oh, great trap by Bogey on his thigh. My word. 
All right, here's Beckenbauer at midfield. It's a little chip for Vanderels. And the defender under pressure gets it back to the goalkeeper. Vanderels did push off there on Paul Power. Paul Power is a very fine player. I remember um, Dennis Stewart last year when with the Cosmos talking to me that uh, Power and Gary Owen for his money were the two uh, excellent young players to to uh, be the, the future of the city. Actually, Paul Power is not that young compared to some of these 19 year olds, but he's a tremendously hard worker. You saw the score a moments ago. One nothing Cosmos. Now there's 224 to play in the first half. Beckenbauer. Here's Wilson. Bruce Wilson, as usual, has played a strong game at left fullback. And he has not only been a, a defensive stalwart, he created the goal as he played a beautiful ball into Georgia, and he made a wonderful shot for the game's only goal. Bruce Wilson, what an acquisition he was in the offseason. Well, I bet Manchester City are a little surprised that they haven't been able to get uh, much change out of the wing fullbacks for the Cosmos. They haven't been successful getting around them on either side. All right, here's Dania with a minute 44 to play in a half. City trying to build something. Here's Fletcher, number four. Boot plays it through now to Dania. Nice little touch to Daly, number eight. City just kind of controlling the ball, but not really penetrating at all. No, but the players up front are moving around quite a bit. Uh, Palmer moving up there. Bennett trying to pull uh, Durgan out of the middle and maybe set up, set up a run through for Tuart. Yeah, maybe just trying to, to lull the Cosmos to sleep and then bang one of those long balls if someone comes free up front. Right now we have 58 seconds to play in the half. Here's Fletcher looking for a man. Here comes a long ball to Bennett. Picked up by Rick Davis. And now Roger Palmer, and it comes in the box, and it's headed out of the box nicely by Durgan again. Durgan, who seems to win everything in the air. There's a good defensive play by Booth. Well, I'll tell you, that Beckenbauer pass was intended for Kinalia, and Booth made a great play. Now here's Power, number six at the midfield line for City with 27 seconds. Nice little give and go for Power. Power now picked up by Franz, gives it up. Bad pass. Bad pass, and Wilson picks it up for Cosmos with 15 seconds to play in the half, and the Cosmos up one nothing. Now a good ball by Franz to Di Bernardo with 10 seconds. Let's see if he can get rid of it. He's going to have to hurry. Here it comes to Bogey with five, with four, with three. Kinalia with two. Oh, he passed it off to Di Bernardo, and that's the end of the half. I thought Giorgio was going to wind up and hit that one. He got it over to Angelo, and that is the end of a well-played first half here at Giants Stadium. And this good crowd that braved the weather has been entertained by outstanding soccer. Now, in a, after these commercials, we're going to go right to that uh, spot we were telling you about with Manchester City, so stay tuned. Cosmos at the halftime. Leading City won the American Express card. It really comes in handy on vacations for hotels, car rentals. The English representative in this year's Transatlantic Challenge Cup is Manchester City of Manchester, England. Unlike the North American teams in this tournament whose lifespans are measured in just a few years, the Manchester club has a rich history behind it dating back more than a century. The club had its beginnings as the Ardwick FC, an amateur contingent that turned professional seven years after its inception. Over the years, Manchester City has accumulated four FA Cups, eight league championships, as well as a league and a European Cup. With all their accomplishments, Manchester City is a popular team with a large following of fans. Of all the players on the Manchester side, Dennis Tewitt is sure to be the best known to North Americans. Dennis played two years with the Cosmos before he was signed again by the Manchester team. Wherever Dennis Stewart plays, however, you can be sure of one thing, plenty of exciting action. Manchester's goalkeeper position is held by Joe Corrigan, a veteran of 13 professional seasons. Joe is currently ranked third among English goalies. Besides being able to halt the action at the appropriate time, Corrigan's years of experience lend a stabilizing influence to a young and sometimes volatile club. Another well-known player for Manchester is Casimir Dana, but 
renowned captain of the Polish World Cup and Olympic teams. Kazoo, as he's known by English fans, has the most international caps of any player playing in the English league. The Manchester side is coached by Malcolm Allison, a man surrounded by controversy for his uncompromising attitudes and forthright views towards the game. Big Mal, as he's known in Britain, has often come under criticism for the uneven fortunes of the Manchester club, but his aggressive management and strategies are sure to produce some positive results with this team. We're at Giant Stadium at halftime. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon and the Cosmos and a brilliant Kenaya goal lead Manchester City 1-0 in the first round of the first ever Transatlantic Challenge Cup featuring Manchester City, the Cosmos, Vancouver, and Roma of Italy. You can see that Vancouver and Roma game immediately following this over most of these cable systems on the USA Sports Network. We'll be back with halftime after the Soccer League. And Phil, I'm sure this is a great pleasure for you to see Manchester City over here, Roma, and Vancouver, and the Cosmos. What uh, gave you the idea that this would now work? Well, I think we've made so much progress in the last 13 years. The game in general at the youth level, at the professional level, that the time has come for our clubs to go out in serious competition against the major clubs of the world. Uh, the added dimension that soccer has to offer, of course, is international competition. We want to do it at the club level. We want to do it with the national team. And we feel this type of competition will will help our clubs and, and get the rest of the world to respect just how good soccer has become in North America. Well, of course, there have been a lot of efforts in the past to bring international sides over here, going back into the 50s and 60s. Um, and some of them were interesting and successful. Others of them were really uh, nothing more than exhibitions. Do you feel that there is a real difference in the quality of play here or in the uh, intensity of feeling that these teams have in coming into the States? Well, I really believe so because both teams have come to play here tonight. And as you say, in the past where there's exhibition games, the players really haven't come to play with full intensity. We're seeing that tonight. Uh, and obviously we expect it for the whole of the competition. It's got off to a great start. And, and we're looking forward to a highly successful competition this first year. Well, there's nothing uh, more reliable as an ingredient for success than a great uh, Giorgio Canalia goal. And I uh, hope we'll uh, get a chance to see that again later. And now back to Jim Carvalis with more halftime highlights. All right. Thank you, Seamus. And uh, thank you, Commissioner Woosom. And again, congratulations to Phil Woosom for putting this tournament together. And it's off to a marvelous start if the first half is any indication of how this tournament's going to go. We'll be back with more halftime activity on the first Transatlantic Challenge Cup after these messages. He's right into Giorgio Canaglia, unmarked incredibly in the penalty area. He chests it down, doesn't let it hit the ground. The scissors swinging kick and volleys it up on the upper corner. Absolutely sensational. One of the greatest goals you'll see in any country in any year. And that goal is the only goal we've had in the first half. However, there have been many, many chances. It's been a very well-played, entertaining first half. We'll be back. I have an opinion. He's, uh, a lot of people think uh, he says too much, but a lot of other people have tremendous respect for his ideas and for his determination to put them into effect. You know, people have said the same things about him that they used to say about Ron Greenwood when he was at West Ham. Maybe not identical things, but the same attitude. And now Ron Greenwood is, of course, running the England team, and they're doing very well, with the exception, as you mentioned, of a couple of... Uh, uh, really weak results in the home championship, but not with the first England team. So Allison also very much a power to be reckoned with in the English football scene. All right, getting ready for the second half here. The Cosmos lead 1-0. If you're just tuning in a bit late, Kinalia scored the only goal for the Cosmos. The man at the left corner of your screen, the number 10, is Dennis Tewart. Now, he was signed by the Cosmos in 1978. In his first year with the Cosmos, he was the most valuable player in the Soccer Bowl championship game. He scored two big goals. And he had a marvelous year. He had a marvelous year last year as well. Uh, and then Dennis Stewart uh, went back to England to play with Manchester City this year. So you know that that Dennis would love to do well here tonight against his ex-mates. And of course, he has a lot of fans still out here in Giant Stadium. He got a wonderful ovation when he was introduced as the captain for City in tonight's game. Now Daniel City and a long ball. And Eskandarian, it looks like, is in the game now. He ran it down to fullback, Eskandarian. And now Naskin's lobbing the ball. I think he kind of lost it. Alberto side puts it now to Johan Naskin's. Cosmos on top, one other. To Kinaya, he chests it over to Durgan. He gets it to Franz. A nice trap, trap off his thigh. And the ball goes over the sideline. I believe it's going to be awarded to Manchester City. And City 
again, keeps up the very close marking. You have to watch the Cosmos very closely. You cannot give them a lot of room. They have too much skill for that. And now the steal by Naskins. Naskins runs now. He goes to Kinalia. Knocked away from Giorgio, but the loose ball comes to Bogey. Back to Giorgio. Giorgio back to Bogey in the box. Deflected. Shot goal! And they say no goal. No, I think they've taken it away from Bogicevic because he uh, appeared to push the defender in reaching for that ball. And the referee has uh, unquestionably called it. We'll see uh, how, how it looks on the replay. Now, here's the little touch of the ball through. You see Bogey breaking from the left. There's the nicely timed ball. He's running in behind the defender. There's the elbow reaching in, but really not that much more than the normal kind of pushing and shoving that you see in any uh, professional sport and in any soccer game for that matter. So a bit of a tough call there for Bogey, who did very well to put that one away. And so the goal taken away from Bogicevic. And it's still one of the Cosmos. Here comes Beckenbauer. Rolls it to Bogey again. Bogey now gets it over here and turning it for Di Bernardo, but it was tackled uh, over the goal line, I believe. It'll be a Cosmos corner kick. Manchester City complaining that the Cosmos hit it last, but the referee not having it. It'll be corner kick Cosmos. The surprise, Jim, in the substitution is that Eskandarian's in for Wilson. On the near post, Di Bernardo got it over, and now the referee says, you played it too quickly, let's do it again. Go, on, go ahead, Seamus. Yeah, Bruce Wilson has been taken out of the game, and that, of course, is a real shocker to Cosmos fans because he plays every minute of every game, but uh, giving Eskandarian a run after missing a few games. Well, it shows you the Cosmos depth as well when they can take a player out and put someone uh, of the the worth and the ability of Eskandarian at fullback. And again, Weisfeiler wants, as you said, wants to give him some time. Here comes the corner, and uh, not a very good corner this time by Bogey. Missed everything. So it'll be a goal kick coming up now for Manchester City. one nothing. the Cosmos. The second half has started off with a lot of fireworks early on. A bogey goal taken away because he fouled before the shot, in the opinion of the referee. And now Bruce Roger Stewart, number 10. Excuse me, Roger Palmer, Jim, down behind the goal there, is injured, being treated by the Manchester City trainer, and uh, Man Manchester City now playing with 10 players until they hope he recovers. All right, now with the ball, here comes City. Over the line, there's Palmer being attended to, and pass intercepted by Davis. And in soccer, for those of you that don't know the rules, if a man is injured, it is you don't have to substitute for him right away if he, if he, here comes Kinalia. In on goal, shot block. Oh, what a save, and bogey goal! And that one counts. Well, I think that's the hardest I've ever seen Bogachevis hit a ball. And now he normally just sort of uh, chips them or hits them with accuracy. Now here's the first ball, a good run by Giorgio Canale. Hits the ball a little early. I think he could have taken another stride. And right at the keeper, it runs loose, and Bogey comes in that, without hesitating and whacks a left footer right along the ground or just off the ground. The keeper has no chance and it's in the corner. And both Cosmos' goals have been hit in that corner. And the Cosmos now lead two to nothing. So Bogey... Finally got his goal. And Durgan is fouled. Durgan called for the foul. Well, Durgan and Bennett are going at it all night. And Durgan is not about to uh, take any of it. Bennett is really pushing Durgan all over the place. And uh, Durgan is unhappy that the referee is not seeing it. But Bennett's pretty clever about it. All right, now the free kick for Manchester City. And now we may, we may have a substitution here. Malcolm Allison uh, across the way is talking to the linesman. Yes, he's going to bring in a player. While he's doing that, let's tell you the Cosmos lead now 2 nothing, and we'll be back with more Transatlantic Challenge Cup after these messages. All right, Cosmos being attacked that time by City, and they weather the storm. Here comes Johan Naskins, and being run down and knocked over the sideline. It'll be Cosmo's ball, a foul call against City. And the referee having a few words with the City defender on that play. Yeah, Steve Daly. Actually, Naskins fooled him by getting body position on him, and uh, the foul was then forced, uh, forced by Naskins. He made he really forced Daly to do it. 
All right, let's watch it again, Seamus. Now look at Nathan's get his inside shoulder. See him get his shoulder inside there, and the defender has no choice uh, but to try to go to ground to take him down, and he does. All right, here comes the Cosmos free kick. 2 nothing Cosmos. First half goal by Kinaya, second half goal by Bogicevic. Eskandarian losing the ball. And City trying to come out of their own zone. The new player is Steve Kinsey, number 17. Kinsey, Steve Kinsey, has come in for Roger Palmer. This is Fletcher in his own box. This telecast is authorized under rights granted by the North American Soccer League and the unauthorized broadcast or use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the North American Soccer League or USA Network is strictly prohibited. Cosmos, Naskins comes in the box, and now they're going to call what? No goal, no goal by Vanderels. The ref, the, the linesman called offside. So another Cosmos goal taken away. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be taken away, but that, that is the fact. The linesman, I believe, called offside to It looks like he did. Now, here's the penetration ball initially. Uh, looking from behind the goal. There you see the return ball. Now, that's where the offside must take place, right there. He must have gone just a split second too early behind the defender for the return ball. All right, we're back to the live action in the city, attacking the other way. The cross is chested by Bogey. Not cleared yet. And now a foul is going to be called against Manchester City in the box. Well, Alberto was fouled. Jim, for the first time all season, there's a younger player on the field than Jeff Durgan. St Kinsey, number 17, who's just come in. Steve Kinsey is 17 years old. And part of, uh, again, part of Malcolm Allison's youth program. And uh, he actually, it was he who was victimized by the steal initially that set up Vander El's chance. So uh, that was a kind of a rough initiation for Kinsey. Looks like Allison's going to bring another player on as well. I see another man standing at the sideline and coming off is Tommy Booth, number five. Now, the players uh, in Europe uh, are, are yet to catch on to this putting a number on the front of the shirt as uh, we do in America, and that's why it makes it very difficult for us to pick up that player until... Uh, well, it, it looks like... Uh, it's uh, Stepanovic. Yes, it is. Um, Dragoslav Stepanovic. An we'll old use friend the second name. <laughs> an old friend of Vogie, of course. They played together. Uh, he's represented his country many times. And played at Red Star Belgrade with Bogicevic. Corner kick now for City is deflected down by Eskandarian. Naskins under pressure. Eski got rid of it to Bogey. Bogey rolls it to Giorgio. Back to Franz. Nice ball work here. Cosmos final way out. Davis now to Di Bernardo. Angelo left to the box. Gets away from the tackle. Here's the cross and a great stop on the cross by Johnny Platt because Kinalia was barreling in on goal. What wonderful ball work that time. The Cosmos just uncanny passing just worked their way up the field and a great move actually by Di Bernardo to beat the fullback. Shane. Oh yes he, he took on uh, uh, Futcher. In fact he left Futcher for dead and also passed Henry who had come over to back up Futcher. Naskin said it knocked away. And now here's a one on one situation. And Birkenmeyer made the play. It looked like a shootout. Right? And Birkenmeyer's had a lot of experience at that. Great opportunity for City. But actually, the Birkenmeyer cut the angle very well. He didn't make it very easy for the offensive player there, Seamus. No, he didn't. But again, I think uh, any, any professional player uh, should be able to finish off a chance like that. Really a great, a great opportunity for Bennett, and he really hurried his shot, and it was a very feeble one at the end. I think he's been marked so tightly by Durgan that I think he may have heard some footsteps, even though Durgan was down on the ground. All right, here's Jeff getting it to Eskandarian. Eski trying to get it to Di Bernardo, but it was behind him. And Platt has been very busy today, throws it out. 35-37 to play in the game, and the Cosmos leading 2 to nothing. In, the first, in their first game in the Transatlantic Challenge Cup, Vancouver and Roma will be the second game on this USA Sports Network and a pushing foul called against Rick Davis as he pushed Denny Tewitt from behind. Rick Davis, 21 years old, considered by many to be the outstanding American soccer player in the country. There, 
They're just coming up, though. They're all over the place now. I and mean, you can see kids like Durgan coming along. And who knows how many are out there, in fact, probably watching the telecast tonight. There's a good ball in the box just a little high. And it went over both players' heads. It'll be a goal kick. So with 34-53 to play in the game, the Cosmos 2. Manchester City Netting will be back with more Transatlantic Challenge Cup after these messages. And Maskins with the intercept. Good defense by the Cosmos there, Jim. The threat was very fast on the left side. They filtered players over there, shut down the threat, and forced uh, Man Manchester City to come inside where they were gobbled up by some other defenders. Good concentration in the Cosmos defense now. Pass for Di Bernardo off the mark by Giorgio Quinalia. Right, and here comes City on the attack. Well, look out, Dennis Tewitt's got a lot of room. Denny, here's a shot, and it went wide. Tewitt, his best opportunity of the night. Well, Eskandarian was drawn into the middle there to cover up the, the vacant spot that was left uh, when Bogey and Franz Beckenbauer had gone forward, and he had to come into the middle, and, of course, that left uh, Dewitt Tewitt finally with some space on his left, and they found him very easily, but, but not a good shot. Dennis has done far better than that. All right, Jeff Durgan ranging now on the attack. as a tackle away, a beautiful tackle. And Kinalia steals the ball, but knocks it over the near sideline. All right, coming up tomorrow night, USA Sports Thursday Night Baseball, the Houston Astros against the New York Mets on the USA Sports Network. Naskins clears. Naskins tackles from behind, and Naskins fouls. Foul Stepanovich. Dania. Tour tried a little give and go with Dania, but it was read by Ricky Davis. Beckenbauer to Eskandarian. Jim Carvelis, Seamus Mellon. Hope you're enjoying Transatlantic Challenge Cup soccer. There's going to be a lot of it for you in the next five days. Bogey for Eskandarian. Good move by Eski to Vanderelt. And it was knocked over the sideline. Last touch by Vanderelt. I thought maybe Fletcher hit it last. I think he may have got a touch, but he played it, I think, right onto the toe of Vanderell, so it eventually did go out. Now, big Durgan, hand. Durgan leads the game. He gets a hand, but also getting a hand is Vim Reisbergen, who's going to replace him. Vim Reisbergen. And his popular stopper of the Cosmos, making his first appearance of the year. And the crowd is on its feet, uh, Jim. A standing ovation. I think uh, equally intended for each player, frankly, because Durgan has been so super for the Cosmos so far. My ball getting through, and Reisbergen tested right away. And now they call a penalty. A penalty shot coming up. So poor Vim Reisbergen makes his first appearance and tackles Dave Bennett in the box, and it's going to be bring out a penalty. That oh, was a very tough play. It looked as though he had made the tackle and got the little touch in. And then Bennett uh, went over his leg, but uh, referee didn't hesitate for a second. Here's a chance for Dennis Tewart now. Denny Tewart now will take the penalty. And he scores it, and it's 2-1. So City comes back on the penalty. And Reisbergen fouls in the box. Let's have a replay now on the penalty kick by Denny Tewart. Here it comes. Bergenmeyer guesses left, and Tewitt went the other way. So from Giant Stadium, the game tightens. It's now 2-1, to one, Cosmos, 30 minutes, 28 seconds to play. We'll be back with more Transatlantic Challenge Cup after these messages. Alan Naskins, who was just yellow carded moments ago. And now we're back to the live action. This is a good ball into Vanderell. Surround the defender. What a shot! And it went wide. Oh, what a wonderful try by Vanderell. What a beautiful touch pass the defender. 
Well, a tremendous explosiveness that player has. Uh, look at that lovely ball that completely beats the defender. Now a little touch. Look, he runs right across him, and now he just flicks it past the keeper. Again, excellent timing in the release of both the, the deke and the shot, and it just barely slides by the post. Vanderbilt hasn't scored tonight, but he's done some marvelous things with the ball. Now Bogey being pressed. Keeps it inbounds. And now cleared, and it's Weisbergen off Beckenbar. Daly plays it to Dania. 2-1 the Cosmos on top. Through the legs of Ricky Davis by Kinsey. Now it comes in the box, and it's a goal. It's a goal. And City has tied the game. Well, we were looking. The Cosmos had stopped, it appeared, on defense. They were almost anticipating an offside. But it went. Here's Kinsey's pass, Jameis. A oh, very intelligent pass by Kinsey. Really beats two players with that little square ball. And there you see Bennett in all alone. And uh, unfortunately, not offside. The rest of the players have not pulled in, to, uh, pulled up to get him offside. And that's not something you see a lot. That is, that players uh, thread their way through the Cosmos defense. We haven't seen much of that this season. All right, so now City really heartened by that penalty and score another to tie the game. Here comes Di Bernardo. Getting it over to Bogey. It's a 2-2 match. Bogey. And he's fouled by Stepanovich. Bogey fouled by Stepanovich with 27-30 to play in the game. And now it's a brand new game at 2-2. Well, you could just feel that uh, that loss of momentum by the Cosmos when the penalty went in. You could just in the play outside, outside the area in their midfield play, they really had lost a lot of their intensity. And Manchester City just picked up their game 150% and got right back in. So the Cosmos have made two substitutions in the second half. They've both been defensively. They took Wilson out and put Eskandarian in. Then they took Durgan out and put Vim Reisbergen in. Right, Tour got it to Danian. And now City's getting on top of this game. The momentum has really switched. The Cosmos pick it off. It's been a good game. And out of Ricky Davis. Vancouver, Roma, the second game tonight over most of these cable systems. Nice ball to Eskandarian. Eski to Vanderell. And it's City with the ball. 26-29 to play in the game. There'll be no shootouts tonight. If the game is tied at the end of regulation, it goes down as a tie. And in the tournament, each team would get a point. Beckenbar couldn't control the ball in the air. Naskins missing the tackle from behind. Eskandarian picked it off. Eski, as I said before, I think has played very well, Seamus. Bogey, a nice little touch to Ricky Davis. Davis working with Di Bernardo on the left. There's a ball to Franz. Beckenbauer goes over to Alberto, who found room on the right. Carlos, a long lob toward goal, and it's headed by Futcher away from Tinali over the goal line. A corner kick coming up. That was a very nice ball by Carlos Alberto because it led Giorgio Canalia, put tremendous pressure on Futcher. Futcher. They went to retreat and the same time glide over and knock it away. All right, on the corner, Di Bernardo fires and a save. Nice quick turn by Di Bernardo, and wow. he fired low, and Platt was on the money. Where have we seen that kind of turn before? Uh, Di Bernardo's been watching somebody in practice. As we said before, Mr. Platt, young Johnny Platt, has uh, played quite a game. All right, here's City winning the ball again, and attacking Cosmos. Here's Denny Tourette, who scored in the penalty. To Dania, who set up the second goal. To Denny Tour looking for the cross. Here it comes, far post, and headed over the goal line. Headed over the goal line. I believe that was Tommy Henry, number seven, from Giant Stadium, in a tie match. The Cosmos two, Manchester City two, with 24:51 to play in the game. We'll be back. With if a man slacks, fit him too close for comfort. If he just can't stand to sit. Then he needs Levi's Action Slacks, perhaps the most comfortable action slacks from Levi's Sportswear, where quality never goes out of style. All right, still a 2-2 game at Giant Stadium. 23-38 to play in the game. Cosmos and Manchester City. Cosmos led 1-0 at the half, led 2-0 early in the second half, and then City came back on a penalty shot by Denny Tuart and a goal by... David Bennett, 
And it's 2-2. That's where we stand. The Cosmos with a short corner. Now bogey in front. Oh! I tell you, Naiskins had a chance. I believe his shot hit Vanderell. Uh, uh, actually, it was DiBernardo, Jim, cut in there. It was DiBernardo yes. with a great shot, and you're quite right. It caromed off Vanderell, so I think it would have gone in because the, it was hit with power, and uh, the keeper, I don't think, could have saved that shot from five yards. Call the foul on Nick Reed of Manchester City. Now Ricebergen plays it in the middle of the field of Alberto. Carlos has passed his way off the mark. And City now trying to counterattack. They have people running, but Alberto is back. Got it to Ricebergen and now played it to Eskandarian. 22-45 to play in a tie game. Vanderels couldn't get control of the ball as Stepanovich battling him. The referees just play on. It's been a hard game. Clean game, but both clubs really playing it. This, this is no exhibition as Phil Woosnam told Seamus Mallon at halftime. These clubs are playing with intensity. Dania lost the ball. Alberto rolled it to Franz with Dania on his hip. Franz gets rid of it to Ricky Davis nicely. Davis now has Bogey in front of him. Rolls it to Di Bernardo. Angelo to Giorgio, a nice ball. Now get to Angelo Di Bernardo, who's obstructed. He's obstructed. Di Bernardo, very deceiving player, Seamus. He has a great quick burst of speed. Here he goes right to for the return ball, and Reed is the person who's obstructing him. And, uh, you know, it's a question of <laughs> whether or not he uh, gave it a little bit of the Oscar job at the end, but uh, there was some obstruction out there initially. So it's an indirect free kick now. It's going to be played to us. Here's Beckenbauer, a high ball, Eskandarian, and they're going to call what? Retake. Retake. All right. Replay. That doesn't mean we're going to see it again. That means we're going <laughs> to do it again. Last time the Cosmos had a kick in this position, Beckenbauer laid it off to Kinaya, hit a hard shot that Platt made a fine save on. Again, they're going to do it, and the shot is blocked. The defender came out and blocked the shot. Good defensive play by City. Defender none other than Dennis Tewart there, who took the full force of uh, Kinaya's shot. Hasn't had to do that very often in his career. Bogey on the corner. Here it comes, hooking toward goal, and it's Fletcher to knock it out of there and knock it over the far sideline. It'll be a Cosmos throw in. Paul Futcher, whose brother Ron Futcher plays for the Minnesota Kicks and is an attacker. This Futcher is a pretty good defender. They're both good in the air. Coming in the box to a Kinaya, but it's headed away. And it'll be another Cosmos throw in. Jim, speaking of Minnesota Kicks, they are tied one to one with Memphis at the end of regulation now. And that came in Minnesota, and they're entering a shootout. Minnesota really struggling in the early part of the season to get some goals. City doing a nice job now, getting it out of their zone. Coming to the midfield line, and Ricky Davis intercepts. Here comes Rick Davis. Di Bernardo making a run, cutting to the inside, so Davis takes his face. Ricky in the box for Giorgio over his head, and now Vanderels is fought off the ball. And an errant pass is picked up by Alberto, coming up on the 20-minute mark to play in the game. Cosmos scored the game's first two goals. City has scored the last two. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you might be watching on the USA Sports Network over cable systems ranging over 48 states. All right, here comes City now. Outside the box. The talented Mr. Dania. He's the Beckenbauer and the bogey of this team. Runs the show. He's the quarterback. Eskandarian playing the man in the box. Bogey brings it out of the air. Alberto back to Bogey. Bogey now sees Di Bernardo flying up that left wing and gets him the ball. Angelo. And has it tackled away. It'll be a corner kick Cosmos. Angelo Di Bernardo, an outstanding game, especially in the second half, Seamus. Well, there he had a chance to take a one-on-one -on -one situation, and of course a lot of players will say, uh, get it over here, get it over to me, but you do want young American players in particular to try those one-against-one -one situations because that's where the skill level becomes increased. All right, bogey now. Naiskin's header. Right on goal. Naiskin's heading the ball from about 13 yards, and it was right there. Naiskin's again taking a great position, manages to find some space, and the ball is placed by bogey right to his head. Here you see that nice... Uh, nicely, nicely flighted ball right to Naiskin's head about 13 yards out and he rises in the air and whacks it with his full force with the keepers very well placed to pluck it out of the air. 
Now we're back to the live action. It's Manchester City's turn to come on the attack. Played the dealing. Now a little give and go. And in the box, and it's tackled away by Rick Davis. Picked up by Kinsey, though. Kinsey's cross. And it comes over the goal. And that time again, Bennett was dangerous in the box. That time Escondarian was on him, but he got ahead of the wall. And Denny Turret also uh, a little upset with himself, feeling that maybe he should have uh, flicked out one to the upper corner or back uh, onto another player. But uh, again, Manchester City establishing themselves very firmly now in the Cosmos half. I think a lot of the reason for this is the play of Stepanovich, Jim, who's yes. really been very physical and has stopped a lot of the stuff in midfield. Uh, for the Cosmos and has added a real intensity to the game. Now you listen to the Manchester City supporters singing. There are some City supporters here. Oh, They're yeah. singing their song. All right, here's Bogey with the ball. Get it to Ricky Davis. Ricky to Di Bernardo. Davis comes into the box. Got it back to Angelo. It's back to now you go! That's the executioner again in the penalty area. Give Ricky Davis a lot of credit for that goal. And Di Bernardo. And Di Bernardo, because after he had given the ball to Di Bernardo and it was lost, he followed it up. He never gave up on it. Watch it. Watch Davis now. Di lovely, Bernardo. lovely flick in there. Lovely glider. Here's pause. the key right here. Now, this ball is a loose ball, and Davis will not give up. See, he keeps coming for the ball and got it back to Angelo. That's right. And then the little flick by Angelo. And look at George. He's got only one place to put it in the far corner. That's exactly where he drops it. What a tremendous game. What a way to start this tournament. And wherever you might be watching, in Billings, Montana, Los Angeles, California, Ocean City, Maryland, one of my homes. I know you're enjoying it. 16-22 to play in the match. Game being watched in Hawaii and Alaska <laughs> as well. And what a game you've had to watch. And stay tuned for game two, Roma. And Vancouver should be a great one as well. Next Saturday, we're going to have from Giant Stadium, Cosmos against Roma. And Manchester City will be in Vancouver. You'll see both of those games. Well, you know, there's just no concealing it, Jim. The excitement of this game is its internationalism. I mean, this is the most popular sport in the world by far. And it's so great to see it growing in this country at the international level because that's the most exciting part of it. All right, here's Franz Beckenbauer for the Cosmos. Escondaria. Naiskins. And Beckenbauer chips it toward Vanderels, but Butcher made the play. Neskins kept it in the box. Kinaya's had a wonderful year. Kinaya's played this way the entire season. Nine goals in the regular season against international competition in Giant Stadium. He's had four. Anyone's ball. Nice little touch. I tell you, Kinsey's done a good job in here for the for, for uh, City. Number 17, the youngster. He had everything to do with that second goal, the tying right. goal. That's right. Now you can see, you can see why Allison. There he is, as Kinsey laying the ball off. You can see why Allison is going with his youth policy, as indeed are the Cosmos. Now they're going after players like Romero and Cabanas, and uh, and in, in preparation for the day when they must be uh, must have to. Acknowledge the fact that Canalia and Beckenbauer are not going to go on. Giorgio Canalia. Play it back to Johan Naiskins with 14-34 in the match. And Otto Escondarian, who came on to play fullback in the second half for Bruce Wilson. Van der Els, Trying to get a ball to Escondarian. It was broken up. Good defensive play. What a great game because it's been end-to-end. -end. Clubs have really come on the attack. Nice move by Dennis Stewart. Now he plays the ball to Dania. He's in the box, and his shot is taken easily by Birkenmeyer. But what a wonderful opportunity set up by Dennis Stewart. That's right, and great central penetration again by, by Manchester City. And this is the thing the Cosmos have got to worry about. There's no question that City desperately want to win this game. They're not here for the fun. They want to win these games, and they are going to attack and attack as much as they can. They came right down the middle there, and the Cosmos a little vulnerable in the center of the defense, and, and Stewart exposed it. All right, here's Ricky Davis. Play it to Bogey. Another great all-around game from Bogey. He has scored as well. Brian Feckenbauer. And Stepanovich fouled him. Well, they've met before. They met in uh, Germany in 1974 when Yugoslavia played West Germany. 
Beckenbauer put it in play. Bogey, a little one-touch pass for Kinalium. Is in the box now. City coming on. Vanderels pressing. Stefanovic will be pressed by Naskins. The one guy you don't want to press you. And Stefanovic having a tough time getting out of the box. Fletcher gets it back to Stefanovic. Now DiBernardo chases him and the fans cheering the Cosmos efforts but City did a good job to finally get it out. Yeah, Davis. they kept their cool. They did not panic. They played the lines well, used the width of the field well, took up good positions and beat that press very nicely. All right. Here comes City in the box. Alberto is there as usual to knock it away. Zipanovic keeps it in the Cosmo zone. Here's Bennett on the left. He has scored. Dangerous striker to Dania. Dania around Alberto. What marvelous skill. Casimir Dania. Outside to Daly. Shot knocked down by Bogey. Now it's Kinsey on the right. And Ricky Davis is fouled by Kinsey. And Ricky Davis made the play. And good pressure by Giorgio Canale, who came back and saw the danger there to put the pressure on initially and set up the uh, good tackle by Ricky Davis. Great dummy by Naskins. He led it through to Eskandarian. Plays it back for Franz. The Cosmos attack with 11.47. And Stepanovich stole it from Beckenbar. Now it's Stepanovich coming the other way to Bennett. Now Ricebergen's going to have to pick up Bennett. They go to Tour on Davis. Or Davis on Tour, I should say. Now the open man at the left side of the box. Trying to get it on his right side. Finally does, but could not turn it enough to get it on goal. And the Cosmos will have a goal kick coming up with 11.20 to play in a good match with the Cosmos leading Manchester City 3-2, to two, Seamus. You know, it's uh, hard to uh, imagine this, but uh, I think Johan Naiskin's a little tired. Uh, he's put in a tremendous amount of work, and a lot of the reason why Manchester City are now getting some good breaks is that Naiskin's has not been uh, his usual self, breaking things up in the middle of the field. Rice Bergen, a good ball to Kinalia. And Giorgio, a good ball to Johan Naiskin's. He'll probably score now because you said that, Seamus. A hard shot by <laughs> Naiskin's on goal. I think you're right, though, because Naiskin's is still not fully match fit. No, he's, he's only been back for a couple of weeks and he's given a tremendous effort as of all the players here tonight. And here's his shot. Uh, again, he sees only a little part of the goal and he hits it off well. Keeper well placed, John Flatt. Uh, quite impressive so far. Well, Bennett still continuing to give the Cosmos defenders a lot of hard work. He gave Durgan a good game. He's giving Riceberg a good game. You know, Bennett uh, and Palmer are two now of the growing... A uh, crop of young black players in England who've grown up as second generation or third generation immigrants and really beginning to make their presence felt in the game. Ricebergen, by the way, still playing with a with a foot injury that gives him pain. There's no doubt about it. I talked to him before the match and he said, Jim, there's nothing I can do. I want to play. I know it's going to hurt, but I'm just going to have to I'm just going to have to play hurt. That's all. I want to play. Oh, what well, great work. DiBernardo and Bogey really impressed. Of course, we know how good Bogey is. I've really been impressed with DiBernardo's play tonight, Seamus. Well, he's come on strong in the last three or four games anyhow for the Cosmos, and uh, I think he's one of these players who the more you let him play, the, the better he's going to get. He's not going to let you down. Angelo was born in Argentina. Played collegially, but grew up uh, playing in Chicago, I believe, the Sparta the offside. And then and then was scouted there and convinced to go to Indiana University where he scored something like 54 goals as a varsity striker. He was an All-American. He was drafted by Los Angeles last year. And the Cosmos picked him up and Larry Ulster in that trade that sent Santiago Formoso and Gary Etherington to Los Angeles. And Angelo has been a wonderful addition to this team. Ricky Davis now with the ball. 8.54 to play in the game and the Cosmos lead 3-2. Bogey looking. And Bennett from behind came back and made a fine defensive play as the striker played both ends of the field. 8.42 to play in the Cosmos lead Manchester City 3-2. Stepanovic. Tony Henry number seven. Bogey knocked it away. What a play by Bogey. Here comes Vanderels. Vanderels, a beautiful ball to Georgie. 
Inalia, and a good defensive play tackle away from Georgia. And run off the ball, run off the ball, and the defensive play made that time by Paul Power. Here's Dennis Stewart. Good ball on the right to Dania. Alberto comes to pick him up. The cross in the box for Bennett. He dummied it, but no one was there. He let it go by, hoping that a, a teammate might be there, and the only man there was a Cosmos player. But that is actually the kind of play that can work, Jim. And late in the game, when players uh, are a little tired running back into covering positions, they can very easily be fooled by a dummy like that. All right, here's a long ball to the dangerous Bennett. Weisbergen comes to pick him up left side of the box. He's also going to get help from... Oh, there's Naskins. He came back to tackle the pass intended for Daniel away. So Naskins came back and alertly made a fine defensive play with seven and a half minutes to play in the match. And the Cosmos leading three to two. Beckenbauer to Kinalia, who scored twice. Georgia, get it to Vim Reisbergen, seeing his first action of the year. Bogey, a return for Reisbergen, and Reisbergen stayed with it. Stayed with it. And now to Ricky Davis. And back, DiBernardo off the mark with his pass to Davis. All right, here's Henry on the right. Plays it to Kinsey. 6.35 to play in the match. Alberto on Kinsey. Trying to beat Carlos, and they knock it over the goal line, so they have corner kick coming up. Corner kick, Manchester City. Now they're going to bring Fletcher. I see Fletcher coming up. Number four, the big defender who's good in the air. He's going to come up in the box. In the box, still a dangerous... And it goes over the goal line again, another corner kick. So Steve Daly from the right corner now with 5.49 to play in the match. And the Cosmos trying to hang on to a 3-2 lead. Here it comes again, and it's headed out of there by Franz Beckenbar. DiBernardo runs it down. Angelo. Can't get around the defender. He was trying to move around Nicky Reed, and Reed made the play. Reisbergen wins it in the air. And Adam Aiskins with 5.20 to play in the match. Vanderels. Beckenbauer, a brilliant ball to Eskandarian. Naiskins is in the box. He tried to cross it. It was tackled over the goal line by a defender. It'll be a Cosmos corner kick. Corner kick now for the Cosmos. Bogey. Vladislav Bogicevic, who has scored a goal tonight. Good corner. Kinalia going for the head. Still in the air. Naskins runs into a, a log jam. And the ball comes free as you see. 438. Davis battling. Oh, what a good job. Daly did a marvelous job to get away, and now Beckenbauer picks it off. And now bogey. What a wide open game, Seamus. Oh, it's really entertaining soccer, no question. Kinalia. Good play by the defender that time. With 4.13 to play in the match, the Cosmos on top, 3-2. to two. Good ball. Stepanovic now for Manchester City. To Dania. Great names. Great soccer names. Now to Bennett. Tricky little striker for City on the right side. Rick Davis marks him. Alberto came right over. Alberto just ran it all the way, didn't he? That's the right. great free safety of the Cosmos. Look at that. Bogey put it between, between the legs Dane of Dania. Legs. <laughs> Unreal. Great return by DiBernardo. And running it's Reisbergen. And Reisbergen trying to pass it back. And they're going to give it to Cosmos. It was deflected by City, they said. Of 
Beckenbauer nowhere to nowhere to go that time. Just lobbed it back in the box with 3-10 to play in the match. That's the arithmetic, as my old buddy and a great old sportscaster Les Carter used to say. Les probably watching in Hawaii. Now's mostly to do it. Here's Di Bernardo coming in the box. He has a chance. Let it go! No go. The referee said there was a foul called before oh. that play got started. Oh, that's a bad decision. I'm sorry. I don't like to pick on referees, but that is simply a bad decision because of Di Bernardo uh, survived the physical contact here very nicely. There's the head ball by Bogey that runs loose. And there you see he shielded the ball beautifully. There's no foul there. And he finishes it so well. Look at far corner again. I'd a shame to take a beautiful goal away. So three Cosmos goals have been uh, disallowed. Reisbergen read that well and broke it up. Vim Reisbergen, 2.18 to play in the match. Got it to Franz Beckenbar. They roll it now to Bogey. 2.10 to play in the match. Angelo Di Bernardo rolls it to Ricky Davis. Here comes Ricky, the fullback, attacking. Davis and Dania obstructs him. Dania obstructs Davis. We have less than two minutes to play in the match now. What a wonderful start for the Transatlantic Challenge Cup, Seamus. Oh, five goals, of course. The fans come to see goals. <laughs> they see some of the fans here lecturing the referee. Three disallowed goals by the Cosmos, so that would make a total of uh, eight altogether. Davis's cross is deflected over the goal line by Nicky Reed. Before it got to the goalkeeper, it'll be a corner kick Cosmos. Cosmos will take their time now. The clock running away. A minute 28, minute 27 running. Bogey will take it. End-to-end -end action all night long. There's Bogey Beckenbar, and it's over the top. A minute 13, and the clock ticking away as Franz Beckenbar, who's run the show brilliantly as usual. The Terry Bradshaw of the Cosmos, Franz Beckenbar, Stepanovich now, under a minute to play in the game. Bennett won it in the air, but Eskandarian picks it off. The Naskins under pressure. Great move by Johan Naskins to Vanderels. The skill of the Cosmos. Not too many players would take that kind of risk, frankly, unless he had great confidence in his skill. To Bogey, and Fletcher read it all the way. 30 seconds in the match. Now to Bennett. Play it back to Daly. 20 seconds and something brewing here for City but it, it's knocked away by Eskandarian and now Eski popping up the middle lost the ball with 11 seconds City now with eight seconds the clock running down and seven and six the Cosmos leading three seconds two one this should be it and that is it and this one is history as Carlos Alberto congratulates Giorgio Quinalia, who scored two goals tonight, to lead the Cosmos to a thrilling 3-2 win over Manchester City of England and the return of Dennis Tour. And stay tuned, because in a moment we'll have a wrap-up on this exciting game, and then we'll be taking you out to Vancouver. Once again, the final. There it is. Cosmos 3, City 2 in the first Transatlantic Challenge Cup first round. We'll be back with a post-game script after these messages. They'll put an outstanding game as always. Bogey put it in play on the left here now to Rick Davis. Now Davis played it inside here to Di Bernardo. The ball was broken up, but watch Davis continue to stay with the ball. Now a little move here to Di Bernardo. What a great pass to Kinaya and boom. The Seamus said, while well, that we saw that before that was only there was only one spot he could hit it at and that's exactly where he hit it and the Cosmos won on the strength of that goal three to two but as Seamus said I think you'll agree whether you've, you've seen soccer before or even liked it or you know you have to admit that if you watch tonight's game that this was some sports uh, spectacular I think oh I think so I think that Giorgio Canalia's first goal was one of the greatest goals I've ever seen and I've been watching this game now for I hate to see how many years but it certainly ranks in the top five goals I've seen anywhere. It was just a superb volley, the kind of thing that you expect of Pele, uh, and Giorgio pulled it off. 
the way this tournament works is there, there are four teams in the tournament the Cosmos Manchester City Vancouver and Roma Vancouver and Roma will be playing immediately after we get off the air here with this game now when a team wins they're in effect you know in, a, in their own four team division when a team wins they get two points when they lose they get nothing if they had a tie they get one point of each so the Cosmos got two points as a result of tonight's win and their next game will be played next Saturday afternoon 1 30 Eastern time right here at Giant Stadium against Roma of Italy who you'll be seeing in just a few minutes against the defending NASL champions Vancouver so we'll wait for the results of that watch that second game and then keep in mind we have another big doubleheader for you next Saturday afternoon 1 30 Eastern time the first game will be played here uh, Roma will be taking on the Cosmos and in the second game you'll see on television as we switch to the West Coast will be this Manchester City team against uh, Vancouver then the following Monday is the conclusion of this tournament Memorial Day we have all four teams right here at Giant Stadium and in the first game it'll be Manchester City against Roma and the second game will be the Cosmos against Vancouver and that'll be a rematch uh, with the two clubs that that played that spirited semifinal here last year that saw Vancouver win in a shootout so both clubs will be looking uh, to win that game you know all right we have a Molson uh, player of the game for the visitors it was Casimir Dania it was hard to argue with that right. uh, Dania again there, Beckenbauer, Bogicevic, he really ran the show, Seamus. As far as the Cosmos are yeah. concerned, I think it's pretty obvious. It has to be Giorgio Canale. You really, I mean, the, the book on Giorgio is that you can you can let him alone for 88 minutes and he kills you in uh, the two minutes. So he got that spectacular opening goal, and then, of course, as usual, he got the winner with a half chance he put away in the corner. But Dania, a very good choice, too, because he did set up that nice uh, inside pass to Bennett for the tying goal. So that's it. At least the first round of the first ever Transatlantic Challenge Cup is now. It's been